Hello and welcome to the Wibbit.net video tutorial series, Beginner Crash Course Guide to Java Programming. And this is a crash course. Absolutely so crash. So be ready. So be ready. So I got Kevin and Brian. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go straight for NetBeams. NetBeams okay. is uh, an IDE for Java. All right, so NetBeams.org. All right, so now we want to uh, download. Downloads. We are uh, working in the Linux environment, which we didn't really mention before. Right. But uh, the great thing about Java is this code will work in Windows. Oh, yeah. It will work on Macintosh. Yeah. It will work across every platform. So it doesn't matter what you write. It's not OS specific. So Correct. Should I just go here? IDE 5.0? Sure. Choose an operating system. If you're running Windows, obviously you will choose this. We are running Linux, so we're going to select Linux and... If you haven't noticed already, we do speak English, and we're going to go... Do we have to put the email address here? Yeah, uh, that's all right. Just click next. That means uh, this actually comes with an installer. Right. Which, which is... is uh, it's quite shocking for Linux. Yeah, for Linux, is, it's not a very... Um, I'm just going to click on the first one here. So we have netbeams-5 underscore zero Linux dot bin. Okay. So right now, it's going to download to my home directory. Okay, so uh, while this is downloading, there's actually another program that uh, this IDE is going to be using. Right. And that is the Java Development Kit. Correct. And so if we go actually click the back button here on the browser, we can see that it says it right here. At least version 1.4 or higher. So now that NetBeans is downloaded, we have to do one thing before we actually install NetBeans. So yes. we're going to install the uh, Java... Uh, developer development kit, and we're going to do that through Yast, which is a, a control center in Linux. So we're going to hit the the K menu and go to System and Control Center or Yast. And in the software selection, we're going to uh, select. Well, have uh, your root password handy before you get that far. Brian's jumping ahead of us. Oh, sorry. Okay, so now that we're in Yast, in the software section, we're going to select Installation Source, and we're going to set an installation source to a. Um, Java source that's outside of the, the distribution disk that SUSE was installed on. Yes, which is this so, selection here. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is disable that temporarily by hitting uh, enable or disable. Now we're going to hit add and uh, this is going to be FTP and the server name is mirrors.kernel.org forward slash open SUSE forward slash distribution forward slash capital SL dash 10.0 or whatever version you're running dash capital OSS forward slash INST dash source dash Java well, good. and we'll select OK OK so this is going to add an additional source and once this is added we're going to uh, enable refreshing so every time that we open up the uh, software, man the package manager, it's going to refresh the, uh, repopulate the package list. Off. Uh, so on. now refresh is turned on, so we're going to select finish. Okay. And now we're going to go over to the software management, or package manager, and in the search bar, we're going to look for Java. As soon as it wants to, right now it's just, it's just refreshing, it's going out on the internet and checking for the available packages on that particular server that we specified. Sweet. So we're going to search for Java, right? Mm-hmm. So we okay. get all kinds of stuff here. So we narrow the search down a little bit? Search for sun. So we changed our search criteria to sun to narrow the results down a little bit because the Java just returned way too much. And we found this. This is a development kit. So we'll select this package and we'll accept. And uh, it's also going to install the runtime environment as well as a dependency. And then continue. So now it's going to download these packages uh, off the installation source that we set from the FTP server. And then hopefully, this will work fine, and then all we have to do is install NetBean, and then we could just get down to coding. Yep. Okay, so the software has just downloaded and installed off the server, and we're just going to click the finish button. All right. And that will make it so that no more packages are installed. Yes, sir. So why don't we close Yast. All right. Yast, whatever you'd prefer to call it. <laughs> so now we're going to open the terminal. Open the terminal? Yep. Terminal is opening. Okay, so now we're on our home directory. That's correct. So let's do an L WD. There we go. There we right, go. Let's do a quick ls just so we can see what we're working with. Okay, so now you're going to see the NetBeans bin file. So we're going to chmod that to set the proper permission so we can execute it. chmod with 777. 777. Pop. All that is doing is it's giving us permission to execute the binary. Yep. And if we push the up arrow twice and rerun the ls command, we can see that it went from white to green. Green light go. Green means executable. All so right. it's ready to go. So let's do a dot forward slash and forward run it. Slash net 
beans dash five, enter. All right, so now it's initializing the install shield wizard. Isn't that crazy? That's what the it says. The install shield wizard how, how on did Linux. How you know that? Wow. Isn't that nuts? It's just wow. nice to see an install shield program yeah. running in Linux because it's just not something that we're used to. I hope all programs someday are running through install shield in Linux. I hope install shield makes billions of dollars because of that. Yeah. Because they deserve it. So here is the the beautiful installer installation uh, GUI. Crazy. Uh, and install shield in Linux, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most greatest thing I've ever seen. Yes, so it is. Just uh, you Windows people should feel right at home. So we'll just follow the next button here, and we'll accept the license agreement. Absolutely, we will. And we'll Look choose. At that. We'll just leave Look this as the default directory name. Isn't, that, fa quite isn't nice. that fantastic? Yeah, it's very nice. Next. Okay, okay. so as you'll say, uh, see uh, the the. What we just installed in, in Yast uh, shows up as a suitable Java SE JDK. Yes. So we'll just leave that selected and hit next. So now it's installing, obviously, it says it right there. <laughs> really excited to see how this is going to go. So, Brian, while this is installing, could we get a quick overview as to what the very first program that we're going to do is? Sure. The first program we're going to do is going to be. Uh, a basic addition and multiplication table in Java. So we're not going to start out with anything more basic than that? Nope. Creating, Creating on uninstaller. Installer. Isn't that fucking awesome? Ah. Okay, so now we're going to so click, exciting. click finish. And everything should be go. We even have a nice, pretty little icon here on the desk, uh. too. But should I double on that? Oh, yeah. I'll, let me uh, just kill the command terminal. All right, we'll exit out of there. Okay, so now we're going to open the NetBeans IDE. 